Former Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone is with us now. He's one of four people cited in that New York Times report who apparently has been closely examined by the FBI over those alleged contacts with Russian officials. Also the author of the book, The Making of the President, 2016. Mr. Stone, it's good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Delighted to be here. Let's Thank make you. sure we get this on the record. Did you at any time as a representative of the Trump campaign or after your time with the Trump campaign have regular contacts with Russian officials during the election? Categorically, positively not. No, even if it wasn't someone who identified themselves as working with the Russian government, you're sure there was no contact? Absolutely not. So wh why are you associated with this story? Why do you think Excellent you got question. connected? Excellent question. First of all, I've never been notified by anyone in government that there is such an investigation or that I'm the subject of one. The FBI never contacted you. I have you. never heard from anyone in law enforcement at all, including the FBI. Uh, they'd be pretty bored if they want to look at my emails and transmissions because they won't find anything uh, uh, of this nature. I have no Russian clients. I was not in touch with anyone in Russia. I was not talking to anybody I believe to be an intermediate for the Russians. You said you'd like a congressional investigation of this. Would you testify under oath during that investigation? I would be happy to. I would like any fair unbiased investigation so that we could clear the air on this once and for all. When you hear this story that on the very same day President Obama imposed new sanctions on Russia for hacking the DNC and meddling in our election, the same day that Vladimir Putin vowed retaliation for those sanctions, General Flynn called the Russian ambassador and after that phone call there was no Russian retaliation for those sanctions. Does it smell bad to you? Well, not as bad as the fact that the same exact story that we have read ran almost word for word, recycled in fact, from January 20th, the day Mr. Uh, Donald Trump was inaugurated. The same story with the same lack of proof. But let's talk about General Flynn. Let's yes. talk about his role as a national security yes. advisor. And to Matt's point here, you, you're a longtime operative. You know yes. this stuff. Doesn't this seem strange to you? I'm not sure I understand what that part that would be strange. That phone call would have happened on that day, and the result would have been no retaliation for those sanctions on the part of the Russians. I think the Russians would like to have better relationships with both Donald Trump and the United States. Uh, we now understand that General Flynn committed no crime, but the, but the exposure, the disclosure of the fact that he was monitored by the government, that is a crime. Would so someone, like someone has committed a crime Would here. someone like General Flynn have picked up the phone on that day without the authority of the president or the president-elect at that time? Based on the transcript that I read, the purpose of the call was to set up a phone call for the president of the United States. What transcript did you read? Did not seem inappropriate. I read a transcript, I thought it was in the Times, in which they they, they skirt the question of sanctions and the purpose of the I think it was paraphrased. Yeah. I don't think it was an actual transcript. Let me ask you about Maybe. what's been going on in the White House over the last couple of days, the yes. resignation or firing of General Flynn. It seems as if there is a, a struggle for power in the West Wing. You know all the players. What's going on? Uh, I do think that, unfortunately, you, there seems to be a division between those who are uh, loyal to the president and those who are loyal to the Republican National Committee. I generally think uh, that in the newest administration, you should hire as many experienced, capable people who were supporters of yours and who were loyal to Donald Trump from the beginning. Uh, there are room in the departments for people who are just Republicans, but uh, the leaking that is coming out of the White House is a manifestation of the fact that there are people who have been hired who very sadly are not loyal to this president. Is the suggestion that you're making, Roger, that Reince Priebus is not loyal to the president, that the chief of staff is disloyal to President Trump? Uh, I guess the inference would be that some of the people that he has hired may be in that position. We see a leak in the Washington Post that the president is like a clueless child. That didn't come from Steve Bannon or Kellyanne Conway or Stephen Miller, that I assure you. So while this plays out, do you expect more parting of the ways between key players and the president? I think that you might have uh, some, some shakeout of the staff, uh, but there are some exceptional people there as well. Is it healthy for the administration to be filled with, as you're suggesting, yes men, people who will not challenge President Trump? I don't think that's the issue at all. I think it's healthier to have people in the administration who share the president's vision of where he wants to take the country. Roger Stone. Roger, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.